100 free agent list, which at last check, Pete, is over 4,200 words long. That is substantial. It took a long time to do that. <laughs> Let's a, just say that. It's a huge pain in the ass. I mean, it's hard. And, and like, this is the one thing that now I think just to give a quick overview on it. The one thing I noticed going through the list is that when the franchise tags get applied and teams aren't even bothering with this, these tags until the last second, it feels like this year, um, when those tags get applied, this free agent class might kind of suck. Yeah, it will suck. But there's also going to be a lot of good, solid players. I don't think the money's going to be crazy this year. I really don't. And and, and you could start with the top. Uh, Dak's, Dak Prescott's number one for the second year in a row. He's He's going to get tagged. Right. If he doesn't get a new deal, he's getting tagged. Number two on my list, probably people will open their eyes because it's probably a little surprising, but it's Leonard Williams. I don't know if he's going to get tagged, but I he probably will. So he's off the list. I don't, think Dave, get, I don't think Dave Gettle can, can let him go. Like, he's too, uh, he played too well. He played too well last year. Yeah. Who, okay, go down the list. And I'll, we can go Chris through Chris Godwin, it. getting tagged. Correct. Um, uh, Brandon Scherf and Trent Williams might hit the open. Brandon market. Scherf, they're trying. I think they're going to try and get a deal done before that. They might tag him. Um, Trent Williams can't be tagged. He's he's going to hit the market unless they get a new deal done with him. What are they, he, but he can't be tagged. Yeah, exactly. No, so right. Yeah. Um, but then like Allen Robinson, Justin Simmons, probably going to get tagged. Taylor Justin Merton, Simmons. Kenny Galladay, all these right. guys are. Yeah, I don't Joe know if Tooney. Galladay's. I don't know if Galladay's going to get tagged. Oh, interesting. Well, let's, that, uh, somebody told me that in the league that he might not get tagged. But wow. Well, let's dive into it uh, position by position because we're not position by position, but we'll start with the quarterbacks. Uh, Dak Prescott, he's your number one player on this list. The next closest quarterback is Jameis Winston at 42. And so when you take Dak off, because he will get tagged, all of a sudden the quarterback list is Jameis, Cam Newton, and Andy Dalton. It's the same three guys from last year. And, it's just and not Fitzpatrick, who is on the b- bottom of it. But yeah, and that's why I was talking to somebody in the league yesterday and they were saying, my gosh, if you don't have a quarterback, you have big problems if you're like a team that can't get into the top two or three, you're going to have problems filling that position. And so when you look at, again, it goes back to why the Cowboys need to lock up Dak Prescott to a long-term deal, why the Texans should never trade Deshaun Watson and why Seattle should never trade um, Russell Wilson. Once you have them, don't get rid of them. Makes no sense. Do you think there's any chance that, Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott end up in getting swapped out. No, I do not. Okay. I do even not. at like a post June 1st trade where Dak I mean, hasn't who wins that trade. One team gets the younger quarterback. It's an easy win for Seattle. Oh, I mean, it, see, yeah, Seattle will have to deal with the cap ramifications. of. And, and if trading. you're rebuilding, if you're rebuilding, do you want to, what is Russell now? 31. Yeah. yeah I mean, you wanna, I, you're taking Dak over Russell. 10 times out of 10, I think if you're, if you're, if you're building for the long haul, if you're trying to win this year, I'd rather have Russell, I think. Yes, definitely. Oh, oh, you were talking, you said Dak for, I thought you said Deshaun for, for Russell. No, Dak for Russell. No, I'm uh, yeah. Well, I'm, so the, the, the logic there is that the Cowboys franchise tag Dak, they do, they won't make him the second highest paid quarterback in football. Russell Wilson is irate with his team. We get to June 2nd and the, Russ hadn't reported and Dak hadn't reported. And the two sides are like, all right. What are they going to do? Sit out? No, but I'm saying if you're Seattle, if you're, if you're Dallas, you think you can win now and you can get Russell Wilson as your quarterback. And if you're Seattle, you're like, all right, Russ hates us. Dak will be awesome in our system. Let's make the swap. No, I'm not swap. I, they both need to figure out how to keep the two of them, period. Okay. Um, do you think a Dak deal gets done or does he play on the tag this year? I think they'll get a deal done. They need to. So, well, he so needs sign. to too. I guess. But you can, you, there's all, because you want your money. He blew you out his the, knee. He blew out his ankle. He's still going to get forty million a year. Like, it well, what matter. if he blew out his knee and he wasn't the same guy? I mean, there, there are always, there's always reason enough to get the money when you can get it. Yeah, but I don't think you take less just because. What? Well, what's less? What are you going to get? He should get Deshaun Watson's money at least. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if the Cowboys want to give him like thirty three and a half million a year or something, or thirty five million a year. What did Deshaun just... get? Deshaun got uh, thirty nine, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's if you're if you're if you're Dak, you don't take less than Deshaun. You have but, better. But, but but you can't get Mahomes' money because he's not Mahomes. Nobody is. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Mahomes so... is Mahomes' contract is like Calvin Johnson's wide receiver contract was. It's just it's, going to be this weird outlier that nobody what, messes with. 
Right. And it, and that's what everybody says around the league, too. They said, thanks God, thank God Mahomes did that because it sets the bar for the rest of the quarterbacks. It sets a ceiling. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. So Deshaun got four years, 156 million. I mean, give Dak 44, 160. Seems pretty easy. I'm not giving him four. That's part of my problem. I'll give him, I'll give him six. Okay. Six for 220, 240. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, but that's I'm not giving him four. I want him around. Okay. All right. Uh, where do these other guys land? I mean, wh- like who's, is James? Well, I think Winston's going gonna to go back to New Orleans. I, I really what, do. Is that what the Saints want? I think I think ideally they'd like him back and compete with Taysom Hill, which means he'll be the starting quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, do you, do you think New Orleans is trying to get involved? I mean, can't, it's so hard. They can't. Cap. They have so many cap, so much cap issues. I mean, they're going to have to let yeah. the players go. No, I don't. They they still got to get under. They're way over. They got a yeah. lot of work to do. So no, I don't think they're involved in it in any. Okay, way. and so it makes like what kind of deal do you think we're looking at for Jameis? Just a. I mean, like a, another one-year contract? Like, come back, let's see how it goes. And No, I think they'll try and get him a th- because if they give him a one-year deal, the, 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 the cap figure might – give him a three. Three-year okay. deal, spread it out. They'll be able to do that. I mean, I think, I think he wants to play, and I think he likes being there. That makes sense. Well, here's one. Somebody mentioned Teddy Bridgewater going back to him. Yeah, I heard that. Um, it only works if the Panthers and, and big brass balls, David Tepper, go out and get Deshaun Watson or – uh, he's trying or Russell. I know he is right. Yeah. He's trying. He wants the quarterback. He wants to get Watson, but what do you give up for him? Two first Brian Burns and Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not doing that. If I'm the Texans okay, three first and Brian Burns. Uh, still not probably not do that. And by, by the way, Christian Shoot McCaffrey, Sean, Christian McCaffrey in three second round picks. If you, no, <laughs> what are you kidding me? If, <laughs> the, um, by the way, if, if the tech, let's just say the Panthers trade three ones, McCaffrey and Brian Burns for Watson is Watson in a better situation than he is much better situation than he is with the Texans. Cause that no, team's going to be it's, depleted. Same yeah. thing with the jets. Same thing with the jets. You trade the Jets for a bunch of first round picks. I mean, they have more first round picks, but like, I think Darnold still has a chance to get peddled, which means you hear that somebody in there were people in the organization like Zach Wilson, people in the other people like to keep Darnold. And so what happens there? If Darnold gets peddled, I think he goes to San Francisco, which sets off where does Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo go? Does he go back to New England? Um, that kind of scenario. If, if the Jets are committed to drafting Zach Wilson at number two. Okay. Uh, the Saints, by the way, just a, they're $66 million over the cap. Yeah. They that's got a, work to do. A, I mean, they have Marcus, a, Marcus Williams is walking away. They can't pay him. Uh, so they, they got is They have issues. I and mean, they're going to have to cut Quan Alexander, cut Janoris. Well, he's Jenkins. an easy, he's an easy cut. Janoris Jenkins like, is a tough cut. I'm just saying, like, you're, you say it's 13 you million. Have to you have to restructure. You have to restructure a bunch of contracts, you know, extend guys. I mean, it's what do all, you do about – what about what, – I mean, what about Ryan Ramchick and Marshawn Lattimore? Well, I you got to extend them. Yeah, but that's – I mean, I guess you can – Mickey that's where cash. Go, that's where cash comes in. You got to have cash, too. That's another thing. Yeah. Remember, these teams – some of these teams aren't as flush with cash as they normally would be because they didn't have any fans in the stands, and they didn't make that much money. You know, it's one thing to talk about the cap, but it's cash – how many teams can handle the cash? Right. Not. I mean, not a not a ton. Exactly. Uh, Andy Dalton, Cam Newton, backups, starters. They might get an opportunity somewhere. Like, can you see Washington? Can you see Washington making a little play for Dalton? I mean, or, Cam, or Cam? I don't think Cam's in play there. Cause okay. Of, yeah, I don't. Because no, I don't. Because of Rivera and and. Oh, you Hurt. think the Rivera and Hurdy thing keeps him away from Cam? Yeah, I don't think they go get Cam. I, I okay. think that's more of a maybe they'll go get Dalton or Fitzpatrick or somebody like that if they can't get a, a guy in the draft. Cam isn't really a fit for Scott Turner's offense. Like he no. they, he was good for Nur for for Nur for Nor, Norv when Norv play was there that one year before Cam hurt his shoulder. Right. But like if and Andy Dalton is a perfect fit for that Turner offense. So is Ryan Fitzpatrick and uh, sure. for a year. But you, again, you're not solving your quarterback situation. But the yeah. guys they got there aren't the answer. Eat high Nikki and and uh, Kyle Allen. Come on, give me a break. Well, but they—I don't know if you heard—they're they're cutting Alex Smith. It's huge breaking yeah. news. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. All hands. Um, 
He's Some a free them, agent too. He'll wind up in Jacksonville as the backup. That's what I said. And it has to, right? Like he's Urban's well, because guy. Because he's A, he's Urban's guy. B, he's a really good guy. And he would be really good for a guy like Trevor Lawrence. And Gardner Minshew can't be a backup quarterback to Trevor Lawrence because it's just not going to work. Right. Too much swag in that in that quarterback room, right? No, too, too much, <laughs> too much. He thinks he should be playing and he shouldn't be. Uh, so yeah, the quarterbacks drop off there. You're going to see those guys. I, I cam is interesting to me just because he was so bad, but did have some good moments. He is like a, a borderline hall of famer. I don't think he's going to get in, but you know, he's a guy that has upside if he's healthy and is playing well, but I just don't know where he fits. He could still go back to new England. True. I mean, they, they Patriots, don't have a page. Patriots fans would be pissed. Yeah. He could still go back there. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll tell you who the top wide receiver will be after the franchise tags are applied. Okay, so three wide receivers in your top 10. Chris Godwin, three. Allen Robinson, seven. Kenny Galladay, 10. And then there's a, a drop-off, but plenty of talent. Those three guys you mentioned before, you think you've heard I don't know if I don't know if Galladay's definitely getting the tag. I, I think God, Godwin will if he doesn't get a deal. Godwin and Robinson will get the tagged if they don't get deals. Uh, which is highly unlikely. So they'll probably be tagged. I don't know if Galladay will. Again, he's coming off an injury plague season. Uh, you know, like he's a good player, but is he a, a is he a franchise receiver? That's, you know, some people will say no. Some would say yes. Mm. Some some guy in the league told me he thought he was, you know, one trick pony, just go deep and, and win balls. So I, I look, I like Kenny Galladay, but I don't know if they tag him, but he could be. So if he's tagged, there's three right off the top. They're gone. All right. So I, I my thing would be if I'm Detroit, I, I don't want to give him a contract because I don't think we're, I don't think the lions are in the spot to be locking up Kenny got, you know what I mean? They're re- why? Because he's, he, if he's, if you want him around, you give him a contract. He's a young guy. Yeah. I just feel like they need to just hit the whole, whole reset button. So but, you're letting them go then. Uh, I would tag him. I think if I tag him, I can get a better pick and return in a trade than I can. Oh, you're talking about tag and trade him then. Tag and trade versus compensatory pick. I think you could get a late second, yeah. early third. Remember, you got to re- the team trading for him is also going to have to pay him too. So you're going to trade for him with the. I don't. Yeah, I just. And I they have he, to have enough cap room to take the tag on. Right. And they can't right. use their tag yeah, on gonna anybody be, else. It's going to be a problem. So no, could I don't. You, I, could you transition tag him? You could. And he just could. see if see if anybody's interested. Um, right. So Galladay Galladay hitting the market would be interesting though. He might he might end up getting a decent contract if he if he's if he if hits he's the, the market if he's if the he's, only one yeah. yeah of those three yes yeah then then um, it goes drops down. There's other guys on there. I mean there's, there's guys that somebody's going to hit one of those because they're an ascending player You're like Corey Davis. Right. Could he? You know somebody. Where, and and Juju, what Juju, about Juju Schuster? Schuster? That yeah. one scares me a little because he doesn't run. He's not fast. What did he average last year? 8.9 per catch, I think it was. It was crazy. It fell off a cliff all of a sudden, even with Big Ben back. But some of that was their offense running just all underneath stuff. But still, no, does he scare you? Yeah, as a number two, yes. Not as a number one. Well, you're going to have to pay him like a number one. Mm. If, you were the, if you were the Jets, would you sign Juju Smith-Schuster? No. No? No. Okay. I would not. Hmm. Where does Juju? He's not getting tagged. Where does he land? Good as a number two for a team that has a good number one, probably who has money. <laughs> Where's that? Green Bay. They don't have money. He he. They he'd be, they, he'd be good with Devontae working underneath. But there's again, there's no Devontae's not a burner either. Yeah, true. You need you need speed. I'm just trying to think who works. That's why the Jets to me make a little bit of sense because Darnold works. Are they they then they play together at USC and he works well underneath, or they were at least close at USC. Um, so that kind of makes sense. But I mean, like could, New England needs a receiver, but they don't need a receiver who can't run. Right, they got plenty of those guys. Juju's a darn good player. He just doesn't scare you down the field. What if you sign the combo of Juju Smith-Schuster and Will Fuller? Well, then you got a guy who can run and a guy who. Uh, but again. There's questions with him too. He doesn't stay on the field. He's got a suspension. He's just coming off of. So there's issues with him too. Uh, yeah, uh, you got Fuller down there in the 40s. He's I mean, he's got to serve one game suspension, and he's only been healthy when he was using PEDs. So that's sort of like a couple of red flags there. I think you're better off taking less, like paying less money for a guy like Kendrick Bourne. Mm. Is he on the list? 
Yeah, he's down at the bottom, I think. But okay, he was. I might have taken him off, but I think that, I think he. Fell. Oh no, no, sorry. He's he is, nine. He is uh, ninety eight now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So again, had his best season. He's twenty six years old. He's he, that's the you know. I always go back and and I can relate this because I was there. But Keenan Cardell was signed as a as a free agent from the Browns, and he did very little for Cleveland. But he was at that right age, and Coughlin saw something in him, and he ended up being a hell of a receiver in Jacksonville. You can if you're going to look for receivers on the try and get guys that are on the rise that you might not have to pay that much money for. He's not going to be a number one, but Juju Smith Schuster's not a number one either. Corey Davis isn't a number one either. No. So you're going to end up paying number one receiver money for those guys when the reality is they're not number one receivers. Is the receiver draft? See, I almost think with the way the salary cap is with the level of talent on these wide receivers and the, and the amount of wide receivers in the draft, maybe we see these guys all have to sort of suck it up and take one year or, or cheaper deals. Well, you're going to have three receivers going to the top 10 of the draft. Chase Smith and Waddle. Correct. No yeah. doubt. Three of them. Yeah. And, and is a good top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10. They're all three will be gone. All so you have three wide receivers and three quarterbacks in the top 10. Then. Four. Probably. Four in the top is Mac Jones, Trey Lance, no, Trey Lance. So you're probably going to have four quarterbacks, three wide receivers, um, one maybe one tight end, maybe two tackles. Do you see any defense going? Maybe one of the corners, maybe Sertan. It's going to be like it's going to be like two, it's going to be like 2017 when guys like uh, Derek Barnett and Marshawn Lattimore fell down. Like the really the good, the high end defensive players that weren't like. A per, considered elite per se coming out fall down to those teams in the 15 and 20s and that's where yeah it's going to be an offensive first round for sure the first 10 will be mm. heavy i'd be surprised if there's three defensive players in the first round shocked uh, first I mean, round you, first in the first 10 oh, okay i was like geez yeah no no because like yeah, micah yeah. parsons has a chance to go there but there's no edge rusher probably worth going in the no. top 10 no down player worth going in the top 10 on defense so you're going to see offensive players right, so do you, but do you think that subdues this wide yes, receiver market then it could that and the tag will subdue the market again if you're a gm do you want to pay number one wide receiver money for Corey davis no. or, or or juju smith schuster or who else is in there's a couple others in that grouping or will fuller or i mean it's you just, can't curtis samuel we slept on he's 19 on your list um, the reason i put him in there because there is a guy who can run a and there's a guy who gives you a little bit of versatility in the way you want to use him. He can he can run all those jet sweeps with him. How does he end up anywhere other than Jacksonville? Either him or Rondell Moore should end up in Jacksonville. That's what I think. They should either draft, sign Curtis Samuel or draft Rondell Moore. Ed, or, they need speed. They lack or both. speed. I'm just saying, it, like, if Urban's going to run his offense in Jacksonville, wouldn't it make a lot of sense to have Curtis Samuel? I mean, but it's really it's Bevel's offense. It's not going to be Urban's offense. But yeah, I mean, okay. Urban Samuel was... makes Samuel makes sense though. Okay, because they, they lack speed. What kind of? And you could also use him as in like you can use him and Lavisca Chenault in the backfield. You could do some creative stuff with those guys. What? Let me. But you, why do you want to get creative when you got Trevor Lawrence throwing the football though? <laughs> Just let him no, throw I'm it. Like, no, no, no. I'm saying like running the ball. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Like they need speed. Look, James yeah. Robinson had a really good year. They need a speed back too. By the way. What, like what, kind of, what kind of contract is Curtis Samuel going to command out there? See, that's the thing. Are you paying him as a number one wide receiver? No. No. But you almost are going to be forced to if he's, if you, I, yeah. Like 15 million a year for like four years, 15 million a year? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. You got to be careful. Oh. There's a lot of guys on the market and there's not a lot of money. That's a problem for the wide receivers. And there's a good draft at wide receiver. Is, I mean, like, is Juju Smith Schuster going to want, I mean, Keenan Allen money or, I mean, Michael Thomas money? Like, Yeah, he's not going to get that. No. He might not get Odell Beckham money. See, if I go down the list of wide receivers, there, there's flaws in all their – I think Chris Godwin is the best of them. And if he wasn't with Mike Evans in that offense, I think he'd be even better. He did drop some balls late in the season, but he rarely dropped them during the season. Um, but Allen Robinson, great player. But this, he's not a guy who can run. He doesn't run that well. He's a, he's a big physical guy, 50-50 ball. And then Galladay, you know, does he, you ever see Galladay go over the middle? No, that's not his thing. He's a deep yeah, ball guy. Yeah. So they all have flaws. They all have flaws. 
So what's the max you would pay? I mean, I mean, all the fifteen million dollars a year is, I mean, Devonte Adams and or Jarvis Landry money. <laughs> this boy, this market well, is so, so screwed up. They're they're as good as Jav- Jarvis Landry. Yeah, better than Jarvis Landry. Yeah, and better yeah. than like T. Y. Hilton and Alshon Jeffrey were making thirteen million. So I mean, I think T. Y. Hilton's I mean, on the market. T. Y. Hilton's on the market right now. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, was, look at his yards per catch last year. T.Y. Hilton, ever, he had a bad year and had the best one of his best years cat, yards per catch. Because he had a Hall of Fame quarterback thrown to him. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say Philip Rivers couldn't reach him, remember? That's right. Um, all right. Guys who might – guys who are coming off the tag. We already mentioned Dak. You talked about Leonard Williams. I mean, I think you probably have Leonard Williams higher than a lot of other people, but do we need to apologize to Dave Gettleman? For the Leonard Williams trade and in the resulting production, yeah, because he played well last year, really and, and 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 also Tomlinson on that defensive line is another guy to keep an eye on. I think that see, there's there's some good defensive players to go after if they because I don't think a lot of those guys are going to get tagged. Okay, uh, what would you give? See, my thing with Gettleman is I feel like he's so invested in his personal security that he's going to try and tag Leonard Williams pay Saquon Barkley and then put some pieces around Daniel Jones to try and make a, a, a decent playoff run with saves his job this year. Does that seem like a, yeah, I think he, ta- for making a deal for Williams, I think he'll tag him. I do. If you give up a second round pick for Linda Williams and you just get w- like one year, like you do, you got to get more than one year. Yeah. I think he'll tag him. Um, okay. So Leonard Williams off the, off the books, Brandon Scherf coming off the tag. I don't think Washington could tag him a second time. Can they like, Find it. I mean, that feels It'd be expensive. They, they want to work out a deal. I think they'll work out a deal with them. Okay. And what about Tampa? If they can't, if they tag Chris Godwin, they can't tag Shaq Barrett. Barrett. The, I mean, they're hoping that they can get him at a discount that he wants to come back and play to try and win it again, which that's all well and good until somebody offers you 5 million more. So no. Uh, and, and here's the other thing. He did well in the postseason, but he wasn't as good during the regular season. He was good. He wasn't as good. So what do you pay? How do you pay him? And yeah. if Von Miller hit the market, which is a possibility who, who commands more Von Miller or Shaq Barrett. I mean, you'd rather have Von Miller, right? I would. Yeah, Shaq Barrett's think, been really good though. He has been good, but, but, I mean, okay. like Von, but what if you got Von Miller and, and Von Miller and Todd Bowles scheme would be awesome. But okay. With Barrett uh, would Von Miller Barrett. If Von Miller hits the market, then you got. Bud Dupree. Reddick. Hassan Reddick. Um, you know, who had a great year last year when he moved outside. Uh, you have Trey Hendrickson. Hey, what do you have? 13 and a half sacks. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, there's some edge rushers in there and the Saints aren't going to be able to keep Trey Hendrickson. The question with guys like Trey, H- Romeo Quara is an interesting guy because he's 25 and I have him probably higher than most people. But when you go back and watch him, he pressured the heck out of the quarterback last year and he had 10, what, 10 and a half sacks that's an intriguing guy because you want the ascending player. You want the guy going up, not the guy going down. So I think he's an interesting guy. Okay. You have Hendrickson at number 26 and he's only had one full year of production too, or like one full year of playing time too. And and that's the interesting thing. Is he a one hit wonder? You got to be careful with that. And did he benefit entirely from having Cam Jordan on the other side? Now you can say that, but Davenport didn't play the same way that Hendrickson played when he was there. So uh, I think Hendrickson, he's a, He's never going to be an elite pass rusher. He's going to be one of those guys that gets you eight to 10 and, and plays hard every single play. Okay. Um, and you would, would you, I mean, you would sign Hendrickson as your, see, the problem is like, you don't want to sign. Do you want to sign Bud Dupree as a number one? Like see, Bud top Dupree's pass- coming off an injury. That's a concern. And uh, off, and off multiple like contract year, like late. I think he's a good, I think when Bud Dupree's healthy, he's a darn good player. Sure, but I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying he's coming off. You know, he played on a fifth year option, and then he played yeah. over on a and then on a franchise tag. See, which, that's the thing. There's a couple of guys that are injury. Like, what what is Melvin Ingram going to get, and what will he give you? Because he was bad last year, didn't have a sack, and missed a bunch of the season. But when he's at his best, it's, that's a good, tough, physical football player who can rush the quarterback. So and and you can slide him inside too, and he can play there if he needs to. Like on a depending on how, what your line setup is. But yeah, I mean. Isn't he uh, see the problem for these older guys? So like Von Miller, does Von try to take a big bite of the apple now, or does he come back and play? Same thing with Ingram. Do they come and play one year, 
try and have a have like a bounce back season as an older guy, a la Justin Houston or something like that. And then you can go out and get a like a two or three year deal with some decent guaranteed money next year when the cap bounces back. See, yeah. I mean, they could do that too. But here's the thing. Those guys are going to benefit from the fact that the pass rushers in the draft aren't great. Sure. Whereas the receivers will get hurt by the fact that there are a lot of uh, receivers. And, and remember like to your point, exactly. Like there's a certain amount of money that these teams have allocated to spend in free agency versus draft picks, et cetera. It's lower than normal. And if they're looking at it, they're like, all right, well, screw it. We're not going to pay this receiver. We'll just draft a guy. Let's pay this. Like we can't get a pass rusher in the draft. Let's pay the pass rusher now and then draft the receiver later. Correct. So yeah. the, the one thing always goes, hey, yeah, that's why we do these mock drafts in February before free agency starts. They're hard to do. You don't know who's going to fill holes, who's going to create holes. Right, exactly. Uh, so the the we mentioned Chris Godwin, Shaq Barrett, but the Bucks also have Levante David at number 14. Long time. I'm a long time Levante David fan. He's like, see, he's one, one of, of the, my favorite guys in the league. He's he one was, of the most underrated players in the history of, or I would say the history of football, but the last 20 years. Captain of the better than team way back in the day. And he never forgot it. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. I was one of the only ones that pumped that kid up when he was coming out of Nebraska. And look, I think ideally they'd like to keep him there, but there's going to be some offers on the table. Anybody who wants a, a good run and chase linebacker, who's great in the locker room and great with the other players. That's a perfect addition right there. The problem is he's getting up in the years. What is he now? 30. He's 33 now. Yeah. See, that's a that's when you start getting into those age issues, that's a concern. Oh, no, he's only 30, 31. 31. Yeah, 31. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought so. for some reason. No, but that's still I mean, a little, that's still that's that's a little older. But you could get you could sign him for th- a three, three year years. deal, get a five year deal, and do three years of it and get out of it after three. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for a team like uh like the Cleveland Browns that have cap space that need help at the position that want to you know that you know you're going up against you know the like the Ravens t- two times a year and you need linebackers who can yeah. They hawk down, you know. Yeah, I, I think I think he'd be a good signing for a lot of teams. Okay, uh, and then Adama and Sue signing these one-year deals. Gronk, you have at uh, thirty-five. Sue is eighty-one because Gronk, Gronk was bad early in the season when he took his body to get in shape and football shape and everything. But by the end of the year, he was playing good football again. He's, he's not, the same he, age. He's the same age as Kelsey. I know it's crazy. He's not. He's not playing any, anywhere else other than. Tampa. I don't think so. No, I feel like he said, like he said, he's like, I'm playing with Brady unless Tom Brady goes somewhere else after this year. Like, he's, yeah, no, he's, he's playing just, in Tampa. Yeah, he's just playing with Brady and he's probably coming back like they had and probably Antonio Brown's going back to Tampa, too. You got Brown at ninety five. I can't see how anybody. Nobody signing him. Right. And Tom Brady loves him. Right. For he's whatever back, reason. He's going back to Tampa. Uh, Leonard Fournette at ninety eight. Is, is he the odd man out here for Tampa? Yeah, has to be. I mean, but again, who's going to pay him? He was he, playoff Lenny is a good fo- football player, but he wasn't good. There were times last year where they didn't even want him on the team. Right. Yeah. In Tampa. I mean, and you yeah. know, they didn't want him on the team in Jacksonville. So they cut him. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, the only issue is, I guess you're fine going in with Ronald Jones, right? You could draft a guy. Yeah. Draft another guy. That's fair. Draft one of the two North Carolina backs. Yeah, those guys are good. God, those guys both of them. Both yep. of them. They are. Uh, okay. Any other thoughts on? I think. Oh, Trent. I think Trent Williams goes to Indianapolis. They have money. They have money. They have a need. They have to protect Carson Wentz. Could go to Jacksonville. Ooh, that would be smart. They. I mean. I mean- because Cam got, Robinson's an unrestricted free agent who I don't think I would rather pay Trent Williams for three years than pay Cam Robinson, who if that was his contract year last year and that's the best you're going to get, then that wasn't good enough. Here's the other thing, though. And in fairness to Cam Robinson and Jawan Taylor, who regressed last year in Jacksonville, you're playing with a quarterback who held the damn ball the entire time. I mean, mm. my gosh, it's hard to play tackle and when you do that. Uh, Justin Simmons, Taylor Moten. Uh, guys in your top 10, you think both get tagged? And Joe Tooney I get do. tagged? I don't know if Tooney gets tagged again. I think Belichick, they, they... Belichick might just have to, like... I mean, he's got to... You got money to spend. Do you need some... I mean, you can't lose all your good, you know... I would I would find a way to keep him, but I don't know if he'll get tagged again. Okay. Uh, Hunter Henry tag again? Yes. People oh. think so. Okay. Yeah, he's only 26. I know. Who'd you rather have long-term, Hunter Henry or Johnny Smith? I think Johnny Smith's going to get paid in this market. Ooh, by somebody other than Tennessee. 
yes, I think he's going to be an attractive free agent. So if you've got like the 13th or 14th overall pick and you don't think you're going to get Cal Pitts, right. Go might. out and pay John o. Smith who you can, this, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're the same guy, but you can like John o. Smith, you could, he gets carries out of the backfield. You can, you I think John o. Smith is, a, it could be for a team that has uh, needs a middle of the field threat. I think he'd be good at it. And he's improved as a blocker too. Does Aaron Jones get paid or does he get franchise tag? Do, do they franchise tag him or Lindsay? Lindsay? I don't think they don't have a lot of cap room either. No, they don't. So is your boy, I, or your boy, is your boy, is your boy, going to get cut? He might. Preston would get cut before Zedarius. Or both of them. Zedarius, um, saves, Zedarius saves more money. Yeah, but Preston, Zedarius can still make plays. Preston didn't do much sure. of anything last and they, year. They don't have any money. They got guys. They got to. I, I, but the whole idea of drafting A.J. Dillon was the fact that you might let, well, you're going to let Williams go for sure. He's a free agent too. Then you might let Jones go. Yeah, but Jones is. I, he, so Jones is good in their offense. I would find a way to keep Jones if I were them. Yeah. Uh, what about Patrick Peterson? He's going to break news. Apparently Debo says he's going to break news on his podcast in a few weeks. Um, do you want to guess what that news is? Is he, is he retire? Is he back with the Cardinals? What do you think? I don't think he's going to get a contract that he thinks he's going to get. Mm. I love Patrick Peterson. One of my favorite players that I've ever dealt with in this league, but uh, he didn't play well last year. No, he did not. Debo. Is it okay that we keep guessing what Patrick Peterson is going to do? Keep keep going for it. All things covered is the podcast. Yeah, all things I think he's going to. I think he's going to go back to to Arizona on a cheap deal and try yeah, to just on run a it back. Yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, and just be like, it'll be like the Larry Fitzgerald thing where you pump it up as a lifelong card and right, right. It's more than maybe you should get, but the owner because Bidwell wants to keep him around, etc. Does Clowney uh -huh. get it? Oh, sorry, Debo, mm -hmm. go ahead. I was just going to say, Pat repeatedly has said he will be playing football next year. He wants to play another five years. Um, at, at some point, that could mean a switch to safety. He said he'd be open to that in the future. In the future. Um, he, he didn't tackle that well as a corner last year. No. <laughs> <laughs> that Pete? Yeah. I mean, I love Patrick Peterson, but he'd be the first one to tell you he didn't play up to his standards last year. How about you got uh, Leonard Floyd at 42 and Jadavid Clowney at 43. The, that's teams desperate for a pass rusher are going to push those up. I, I Clowney doesn't do anything for me, uh, but I know how this league looks at him. I wouldn't sign him. And Floyd actually played really well last year in the run game too. So I think Floyd's an intriguing guy, but again, is it the same thing as Dante Fowler? Yeah, like, like where Fowler. you live in next to Aaron Donald. And <laughs> yeah, and he didn't when he went to Atlanta, he didn't do anything. That's right. Uh, Kevin King, my Lord, he's on the list. You know what, though? Kevin King the year before was really good, yeah. and he was okay for sometimes the season. He just had a terrible down the stretch. Are you worried? Like his mind drifted. I don't know what happened to him. He just, I, didn't hey. look like the same player. <laughs> Football players got personal stuff going on too. You never know. You know what I mean? Like, and he and he's only what twenty six. So there's yeah. there's football, good football left in him. Should we be worried about the Rams defense? Leonard Floyd, Josh Johnson, and Troy Hill. That's troubling. That is troubling. Yeah, like, I mean, Jalen Ramsey, but, but they got are Williams. Awesome. But they got Ramsey. Williams is a good corner who played well last year, but he's a restricted free. I mean, uh, yeah, you should be worried. That's why I think. They have four guys. If I'm not mistaken, the top four guys in salary on their team take up seven or the top three take up $70 million. Donald, look at it. Donald, Ramsey, and Stafford. If I'm not mistaken, they take up $70 million in cap room. Is that correct? Can that be that right? Is, that may be including, uh, yeah, that's right, 42, 59, and then uh, that maybe that includes Jared Goff's dead cap. 70, yeah. 70 million. It's 80 million if you include Jared Goff, I think. Yeah, but it's 70 million in three guys. That's a lot, isn't, isn't it? What's right? Goff's? What's 49, Goff? so they're 50. Yeah, 70 million. Yeah, you're right. Donald, Ramsey, and Stafford. That is a yeah. Stars and Scrubs team. That's <laughs> That's, and so, look, they they got to hope that Van Jefferson's good as a wide receiver. They're going to probably have to restructure those receiver contracts. Uh, they got to hope they hold up on the offensive line. Um, yeah, there's issues on that team, no doubt. Yeah, and that and they lost their defensive coordinator who you know revitalized that that defense in a in a big big way. All right, any other takeaways? Um, I think there's some hey, some back end sleepers you got. Who, who you back in? I think Tomlinson. I think Tomlinson is going to be a good good signing for somebody. I mean, if you if you look at at 
you know, those kind of guys, they come in and they help teams right away. They're, they're run pluggers. Um, I would look at him. He's at the right age. I'm just trying to look at some of the other guys down the line, guys that I like more than maybe. Um, hey, you know, what's crazy is just looking at this list and JJ Watt was on it. He got, he signed with the Cardinals, obviously, but correct me if I miss So Ryan Kerrigan, Andy Dalton, Cam Newton, Alden Smith, Patrick Peterson. Who else am I missing from the 2000 er, from the 2011 NFL draft? Like it's pretty crazy how many guys from the, like at a hall of fame draft class are on that Richard, list. Richard Sherman. Oh, Sherman. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Man. Ronald Darby is a guy that I think teams will look at. He really played well last year. Uh, you know, down the lot, you're talking about down the line guys. Um, Jalen Mills, Jalen Mills played well at safety at the end of last year when he got adjusted to it. Remember they were going to move him to safety. Then they had in your injuries at corner. He went over, moved back. I thought he adapted well. It, it, Cam Sutton, the cornerback for the Steelers, they, you know, he's not technically a starter, but because, you know, Mike Hilton's on a restricted free agent too, the nickel corner. But yeah. last year he played outside, he played inside. He had his best season. I think those are the kind of guys you look for the younger players, players you know malik hooker's an interesting that's what guy. i was about to mention i would that dude is a ball hawk when he's healthy but he just cannot stay healthy and he's coming off a torn achilles so uh um, you sign him for like a one-year six million dollar deal or five million dollar deal i don't know what you're signing for but you take a stab at him and if he comes in and he's plays 16 games yeah because hit, there's not like, a lot of rangy safeties in the league yeah well who's, who's no. a good who's a who's a good fit for him um Boy, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. That's a good I'm one. Sorry, I can't. I can't think of anybody that immediately. I'll tell you who needs it. Uh, Jacksonville would be a good fit for him. Ohio they State need... guy. Yeah, he re he recruited him, right? Yeah. So you go out and you get that. This is a very Urban Meyer thing to do in free agency. I think is you go out and sign Trent Williams, who was he Ohio State? No, no. Where did he play college? At, uh, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, he's Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so he's so you, but you go and sign Trent Williams as the protector, right? Then you go get Curtis Samuel and Malik Hooker, two guys you know, two guys, Ohio State guys, two guys with a lot of upside who probably probably wouldn't be that expensive. You got cash to burn. You draft and John Trevor o. Smith and John o. Smith, and you would have me intrigued by that offense. I would be intrigued by that offense if they have an offense with Trent Williams at left tackle, Norwell at left guard. Uh, Linder at center, Can at right guard, Taylor at right tackle. You have Janu Smith at tight end. You have DJ Chark, Curtis Samuel, and LaVisca Chenault, plus James Robinson and Trevor and Lawrence. Colin, and Colin Johnson, who they really like. And then you have Trevor Lawrence. And, and you, and okay, and here's the other one. If you sign a couple guys in free agency on defense, because they have the most money in the league, they could yeah. sign whatever. Why not draft a speed back at some point in the draft? Sure. But ETN. if you, if you, ooh. Sure. If you do all that, you can talk me into that team being better than the Carson Wentz like Colts. Right. Uh, you guys laugh at me when I said that they got so much money and so much and so many assets that well, you, you got to do it right. Right. But yeah, I, I mean, that's the key, but it, okay. Add Rondell Moore instead of Curtis Samuel. Then the, I mean, I, I, I like Curtis Samuel. I'm saying if that's the plan they take and it's not crazy, like two Ohio state guys, a move tight end. Hooker, and wouldn't co Hooker wouldn't cost you a lot of money either. Mm -hmm. No. Ideally, in their ideal scenario, in free agency, they get a left tackle, a tight end, and a monster defensive player. Whether the the big ticket item is a so if Leonard Williams was free, that would be the guy they would go after. You sign him. He's from down the road in Daytona. He grew up in Daytona Beach. You go get him. Um, but you know, like these again, the quarterback situation is going to play out. Where does Darnold end up? San Francisco. You think so? I do. How does he get to San Francisco? If they they make a deal for him. So they I trade think, they trade for I him think because Darnold, the Yeah, because they don't believe in Jimmy Garoppolo. I would personally, if I were the Jets, I would keep Darnold and trade same. that number two pick and get extra picks. That's what I same. would do. Because I think he fits with it. And again, I think there's some talk that they're splitting that building on whether to keep him or not. So, in other words, in that scenario, the Jets are like, we are in on Zach Wilson at two. They trade Darnold to, to, the, Niners. to the Niners for a second-round pick or a 
and uh, the Niners trade Garoppolo to the to Pats for a third round pick. Right. And then, and then, then, then somehow Carolina either gets one Watson, which I don't think they will, or they draft one at that spot. Mm, interesting. That's spicy. I like it. Is Mac Justin, Jones, is Mac Jones a top 10 pick? No, no. Why, why are people somebody doing in this? the league told me yesterday? I think he's third round talent. See, why are people doing this? Like, I'm not trying to disparage I, Ryan Wilson. Ryan Wilson. Yes, you are, but so am I. No, in fact, no. I'm going to be on a draft show later on with him, and I'm going to disparage the heck out of him. Do it, please do. But like, I, I told Wilson, plant like, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're there, we had traps Chris Trapasso on the on a on a on a, on a draft on the podcast on Monday, and we, I was like joking, like it's Mason Rudolph season and Big Ben's gone, but like. Look, he was dead ass wrong, but you know, if that's your, if you think that and you believe that you should take a stand, you shouldn't like cave to group to group think. And when you're talking about the drafts now, having said that there's a bunch of Mac Jones hype popping up. Like Stephen A. Smith was yelling about the Eagles taking Mac Jones. All of a sudden Wilson's going to get overshadowed by the other like people screaming louder. And I, and he should have, he should have planted his flag louder. I don't want to be on the Mac Jones Hill. That's how I, I watched do. three Mac Jones games yesterday, just cause I want to go back and do more work on them. There's a lot to like about them. Sure. But not top 10. No. And, and I watched Davis Mills from Stanford three games yesterday. They're eerily similar. Mm. Would you rather have a, a fifth round David Mills or a... uh, he'll go before the fifth round? Okay. Keep an eye on him. He's going. He's going higher than you think. Okay. That kid was a phenomenal recruit. I don't know if you remember that he came out of, I think it was Georgia. He was a big time recruit. Everybody who, wanted him. Who was the guy that he was going to replace? Uh, he was coming in because it was Luck, and then um, KJ Costello who Costello, transferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He transferred yeah. to Miss to Mississippi State. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he and he's not that good. But but Mills, the last I watched his three games, he was good against against uh, Oregon State. And they're not good, but he was, looked like a really good quarterback. He's solid against Washington. And then I watched the UCLA game. He's got some talent, man. That kid can throw the football. Right. Pete's early. That's an early, uh, better that's than an early, that's an early one. But yeah. I did watch Trey Lance's game. I haven't watched the, the games from the year before I watched Trey Lance against, uh, last year, the one game, his, he one, his one game this year, whatever. Like yeah. he's a big physical kid, but he's got a weird motion and he has a tendency. His upper body's kind of goofy when he throws it, but I don't think you can take him if you don't have someone to, to, I'm like you can't see. take him. You can't take him and be like, "Hey, here's day one." Although Debo, gonna, Debo wants him to go to Philly. I think I'm going to watch him. I think he's working out at a combine down here on Friday, and we're going over there. So I think I'll get to see him if he works out. All right, do it. We'll, uh, we'll have to have you back on to talk about it. Uh, in the meantime, make sure and check out Pete's list of top 100 free agents on CBSSports.com. Don't worry, the boss has made him do it early. It'll be rendered irrelevant in uh, in in like in six days when the franchise tag deadline pops up, but, but you, or I guess 15 days, but you did a great job on it as always, Pete. And uh, thanks for chatting.